Hello, uh, I'm Richard Raffin. Uh, in this video you're going to see how I made this little green turned bowl. So what I have here is some uh, Casuarina green 6 inch diameter 150 millimeters, and this is going on to the middle size of the 3-in-1 screw chuck which doesn't need all that screw so that goes on there. Leaves of the work. Just make sure it's on. And as usual, I will rough this down on the outside with a uh, half inch spindle gouge, an old half inch spindle gouge. any bark so the first thing I'm going to do is to get rid of all that and then see what I've got left and I have in mind uh, a little enclosed form a utilitarian bowl too so. I like things to be used on it and just see what mysteries or nasty surprises the wood might have I've cut this blank so that the pith is that dark reddish bit and that is as central as I could get it uh, on the blank and I expect that end to kind of pop up when this whole thing dry, uh, dries out. Flat area there, little bit of residual bark just there, get that off and uh, we're almost there for shape. And bring the revs up a bit so I'm now running at about 1300. Leave a little band there for a feed. And with these, I tend to get the. This is going to end up with a rounded base. So uh, let's get a foot on it. Get rid of that little flat area which is in there. And I'll probably do this most comfortably here, um, especially since the camera's where I normally would stand. I'll uh, just do this with the scraper. Brush the surface gently. And I've just realised I haven't got my microphone connected. We've now got an improvement in sound. Right, so I've got a little bit of a flat area just in there. They go across the dip, come out the other side. It's going there, but that's going to be easier to get at from the other side. So that bit's done, and now I can turn that round into a chuck. And so these are 55 millimeter sharp jaws going right in and up to the bottom of the curve here. Now I noticed when I was doing it out there's still a flat area there so that's got to come off and what I want is the curve kind of coming through the top so I'm going to cut this with the uh, 3 8 spindle gouge
here to do these with a uh, spear point which uh, you might have seen in a recent um, video on the uh, on shear scraping tools get in there. Uh, one. Get me right under the bead. As we've just seen has a flat on it so that needs to come off. Yeah, it's like the whole blank. Get rid of what I don't want which is the flat area and then see what I can do with what's left. That is still not quite gone. Need to just see what the curve looks like. You guys in the way. Uh, I've got quite a bit to come off there. Looking a bit better. Okay, now the bead bit. I'm just thinking in terms of beads. So I often say you don't have to be round. You can just, in this situation, just have a band. Try that. Working half blind here because the camera is where my head would normally be. That didn't sound very good, so we'll just have a look and see what happened. Oh, there's a little kind of furry bit there, so uh, all I need to do is just get the tool in firmly on its side. I'll be blocking your vision for that one, I think. Yeah. And just round that over. So it'll be okay for the outside. This is going to warp quite a bit. So, um, in fact, uh, beads there might be quite nice. I'll just make two beads out of that. So first thing is to drill a depth hole, do a little starter hole with a 3 8 spindle gouge and then this is a fairly aggressive depth drill um, being uh, about 8 millimetres and the uh, 6 millimetre one is better. My 6 millimetre one doesn't go quite this deep at the moment or I don't have the marks on it so I need to be just shy of the mark where my thumbnail is. Right, right we can start off with this roughing this with the um, 3 8 bowl gouge, deep fluted bowl gouge. 
create flute, that is. So in on its side, rotate very slightly, pick up a better cup. So you, we can all see what we're doing. And I like to get to the bottom of the hole. At least I can see the bottom of the depth hole, so I know where all the other cuts are going to end up. So I can transfer to the bigger gouge now as the half inch spindle gouge, uh, half inch deep fluid bowl gouge, half inch flute. quite a steep bevel on the nose so it's difficult to get it right across uh, on this leg my dust hood in the way so I'm coming to the 3 8 which has a uh, deep blue bowl gouge which has a longer bevel on the nose oh dear 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 Get in there and around the bend. I aim to get a clean cut in just past where the beads are, really, and uh, on that with a heavier gouge now. And I very rarely go all the way around with a gouge. So I've just found I've got more control really with the uh, with the scrapers, uh, more control over the shape. I want to get the rest at right angles to the direction I'm cutting. So an eighth of an inch to come off in there. Good eighth of an inch. So that's down to about uh, just over a quarter of an uh, uh, I'll do it in millimeters. So it's uh, five five and a half millimeters that inch ruler is in tenths and that uh, gives me even more than the muddle than eighths and sixteenths right so we can get around the rest I think with a scraper so this is a one inch round um, bowl scraper about the bulk anyway and I can do a little bit more with the bowl gouge I think there. Just feel where I am down at the bottom. Yep I can go further with the bowl gouge. So the spiral grind um, it's about probably about 40 degrees on the nose and then much steeper on the on the right wing. Sounded thin. Just see how thin. Oh, 
I oh know it's all right. About the same. Have a little bit now. I'm on the on the flatter face. I need to have the tool tilted down very slightly. to be a rounded base so I don't want to have it uh, an even wall thickness all the way around I really want a little bit of weight in the bottom just to make sure it doesn't fall over or roll around too much so right down in the bottom I have that much and some of that's going to come away anyway so it's not too far off where I want to be I just need to get rid of these little ridges those little ridges in there. Now don't lean across the lathe bed to see what's happening. I can see what's happening down over at about four o'clock. Uh, I'm hoping that will just fit in around the corner, which it won't. So I need a uh, a slightly larger scraper than that or a slightly tighter curve that won't do it either so this which is really an end grain scraper um, that will do it good now I thought I'd stuffed up the rim but it appears not even better right so that uh, now gets set aside for an hour or so to uh, to just dry off a little bit I could get the hairdryer onto it um, but um, just let it dry naturally for the moment and I'm going to keep it in the chuck uh, just so uh, it stays as symmetrical as possible. It'll probably move a little bit. But we'll be back in half an hour or so and see what it, uh, what's happening. Well, the bowl has been sanded but not oiled and it needs to have the back turned off. So I have a chuck here which is actually a kind of roughed out bowl. There's a shoulder on the inside which goes over these jaws. And I'm hoping it's going to fit over that. Just needs to be a little bit smaller. So this is when you practice your entry cuts. Um, cutting a foot or things like that. So put a little bit in there. fit this over the wood as it's spinning it's just asking for a catch that needs to go down oh, quite a bit further just eyeballing it needs to go down to about there and what I want is a bit of an angle here uh, slope moments about four degrees that just gives me an idea as to where the bowl's going to fit. Now, I'm going to do this with a jam chuck because when I turned this originally, I left that little white dot in the center. So, lock that in place and line up the white dot with the cone. That should be pretty good. So this is going to be a round bottom bowl. So all I have to do really is just round it, round it over with a very slight dimple in the middle. 
just using the left wing of the tool. Tools rolled over about 45 degrees. This is the half inch spindle guard. Used as a shear scraper here. got a huge amount to play with in the bottom. And the last little bit uh, that'll get sanded off off the lay. Right, so that gets sanded. It's 120 grit and I really want to build up some heat just to dry off the surface a bit. a little bit of sanding on the outside um, above the beads but not really below Or 240 grit rather. on enough that I could have uh, turned this off but much easier really to get this off um, with the sander with the uh This now goes to the microwave uh, and that'll have 90 seconds bowl this size about six by two and a half inches I think it's finished 70 about two and three quarter inches right so to the microwave so here we are ten days later um, this little bowls had around six goes in the microwave um, uh, at around 90 seconds a time on cook um, it's come out steaming each time and as you can see the ends where the pith came right across the middle the ends have popped up a little bit as these growth rings around here are trying to straighten themselves out that's the way I like to think about it uh, the beads have just emphasized the warping that's taken place it's warped very slightly but it's not going to tip over and you could use it for almost anything from uh, your cornflakes in the morning with milk um, through to curry if you wanted that uh, or as a jewelry box 
jewellery bowl. I do like things to be used.